Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This episode is going to be focused on repairing these little cars here. Now what they are, are Radio Shack Zip Zaps. Now before you stop the video and go, oh, Radio Shack's all garbage. Well, that's not entirely true. These are not just the Zip Zaps. These are the Zip Zap SEs. And the difference between this one and the first iteration, the Zip Zap, is that this car is fully proportional. Yes, proportional throttle and proportional steering, as well as the ability to select up to six different frequencies. These cars did not come with a certain frequency. You could program them one through six to have up to six of these cars in operation. These came out around uh, between 2002 and 2004, I believe. But the fact of the matter is that these are old now and the batteries are all dead. Now I have fixed a couple of these already and I'll show you how to do that. We will start with one of my favorite cars of all time, the Toyota Corolla AE86, and take the body off. Now, the beauty of the SEs is that they have operational headlights and taillights. Not only that, but the headlights come on when you're going forward, and the taillights come on when you hit the brakes. So we pull it up, unplug this little harness here that plugs it into the car, and this is what we are left with. The PCB has been coated in some kind of rubberized surface, perhaps for just preventing little ones from touching their hands and shorting things out. And let's see here, I'm kind of drawing a black on a blank on how to take this apart. I believe we have this screw here. So these cars even have front suspension, which is pretty cool. They have the steering trim here at the bottom as well, so you can set that. And these are the charging ports at the rear. You can also change the rear gear ratio, the wheels, the tires. There's quite a bit of novelty in swapping all this stuff out. Go ahead and unscrew this little flat. Uh, this is a Phillips head. Move that out of the way. And I believe once you've done that, you should have access, whoopsie daisies, let's not lose that, to lift the PCB up. Actually, the front one has to come off too. And very gently just pull it out of the way. Now this battery I changed probably around seven years ago and it has died again. So that is the battery that was a replacement battery, again. I think six years did pretty well on this little battery. Now this is the brand. Uh, Daytona Industries. It's it's a decent battery. I can't say that it's brilliant, but it does get the job done. It also has a higher capacity than the original. The problem is the original battery was a bit narrower. Okay, so we have our little positive sticker right there. And uh, if you if this sticker is missing, because that doesn't look like it's going to be there very long, the positive is the smaller side. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just popping the battery out and putting the new one in. Move that little clip there. If we look at this car here, and this is an original, we can see that the sides on this car here are completely enclosed. Whereas on this car, they've been open on both sides. That is the issue. You must cut this out. And to do that, and I suggest significant caution here. What I did is I took my razor blade and I just simply ran it along this over and over and over and over. And it took maybe 30 minutes of just doing this very gently on each side. But the result of your patience is a beautiful cut. And this then allows the brand new battery, whose polarity I've forgotten. Let's open up this one here. Since this battery also has to be changed. On this one, I discovered that I only have to swap out one side if I remove the heat shrink around the perimeter. With the heat shrink on, you can see that it's nothing more than two very small batteries. I believe they're called quarter triple A. That's exactly what they're called. And this will allow you to only have to deal with one side and not both. So we'll just pop this out. I believe they are tack welded in the middle. I believe they are spot welded in the middle and that is correct. You can see how they are attached. So this battery is now dead. So on the one that I've got both sides cut out on, we'll just slot it back in, noting the positive orientation. I think it's actually gotta come down at a bit more at a bit more of an angle and make sure that this wire here is out of the way. Use the non-sharp side of the X-Acto knife to move that. Okay, cool, so that's in, and that'll just slot right in there. Before we reassemble anything, let's go ahead and charge it. 
So just to show you what the original one looks like, let's open up this one here and slide that up and over. And hopefully it's not too, oh, it's got some corrosion on that one. Get this off, get that out of there. So that is the original one. And you can see that it is a bit shorter than the replacement. These are quarter triple A's. So I don't know what the heck this is here. Anyway, so these have 80 milliamps. This one here has 70. So you're gonna get a bit uh, additional runtime, but we gotta clean this now. <sighs> Well, that's unfortunate. There's some... All right, to do that, we're just going to get our toothbrush here. I'll put it back in the drawer later in the bathroom. And some vinegar, and we'll just scrub that down pretty well. It's bubbling in there quite nicely. So we'll just give a little bit of scrub with this. And I found that this does the trick beautifully. It also doesn't harm anything else. So now that's nice and clean, we can try and put in the other one. To cut this open, uh, on this car here, I did the passenger side, so we might as well be consistent and flip it over. Remember that you do have some wires here, so let's get these not in the way of the blade. And I'm going to simply sit here for, I don't know, 15 minutes and just keep doing this. One, two, and then across. And you are more than welcome to use some kind of assisted or rotary device. All right, so this took about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and I was able to get this chunk out. Again, I just scored it over and over and just being careful uh, you want to work away from this corner and that corner so kind of down down and then i went this way and stopped and this way and stopped and eventually i was able to get it out to get it out i scored the bottom just slightly and then pushed it out from the inside you don't want to push it in because you risk folding over this metal tab so at that point here we can assemble our last one so to charge the car we'll turn the radio on Notice it's, it's green. Uh, and just to note what happens when the car is dead and won't charge at all, we'll set the car on it and it'll flash for a moment. Now give it a minute because it can flash and then start charging. Now it's been so long, I don't actually remember what the light does when it starts charging. I want to say it turns amber. Sadly, amber is an error, so that's not going to work. Now for the other battery, we have to take the cover off. So we'll just very carefully get our X-Acto knife and you don't want to get it under the green or whatever the color that the new battery shrink wrap might be. There we go. So you just want to get the top off of that, just like that. And very carefully, while you're not looking through your viewfinder, you want to get that peeled. Once that happens, we can come in with something that isn't as sharp and slowly start peeling this off, off camera. Okay, I've got it almost off. There we have it. Okay, make sure you squeeze them together. You don't want to break that pot weld. And then again, drop it on in here, noting the polarity. The negative will be away from us. And again, we have to get it under that cable right there, just like that. And then again, with your X-Acto knife, push in the tab here. And there you go. So this will only require one side be cut out. Okay, in the meantime, before we assemble, let's test our new one. This is the one that has the original heat shrink on it. So let's drop it on there. I want to say it goes solid red when it's charging. I don't remember. Amber again. Okay, in the meantime, oh, car's already twitching at me there. I don't, I don't know what it's doing. Is it on? Okay, now that these have been tested to be operational, we can just go ahead and reassemble them with the parts that I've already lost. So that goes right back in here. And again, you wanna be careful with these things. They're not getting any younger. Okay, cool, that goes there. I believe that is lined up. This goes smack dab on top. And remember to back thread the screws to prevent stripping out the uh, threads here. So that goes in. Then you get your retainer, which is still on the antenna. Flip it around, set that on top of the little crystal. Just like that. All right, so that is reassembled. Turn it on. Oh, it's already on apparently. So go left, right. And again, you can, you can see here on the steering wheel, it is proportional. So we'll accelerate, I'll go slowly. Okay, this is me going as slow as I can. It's been a while. If I punch it, oops. Okay, it took a couple of attempts, but now it's red. Solid red means charging. Amber means error. Solid red means charging. Okay, I'm sure what the issue was that these batteries have been on a shelf for a long time, so they were completely depleted. And now it has turned green, so that means it's fully charged. Let's go ahead and take it for a little spin here now and turn it back on. As I recall, you have to charge these in the off position. And let's see what happens. Cool. 
I'm making it go slow. And the Barracuda can go on now. All right, so now we have three operational ones, which is awesome. Let's turn the, any of these on. Okay, so the Torino is on. And if you want to see more of these, by the way, we'll have a buyer's guide. But let's turn this, let's turn on the Corolla. So that's accelerating. And turn the Barracuda on, accelerate, reverse. Nice and slowly. And lastly, the Torino. So we'll turn that on. It's weird because it lights up the high beam and brake reverse. So there we go. Three completely operational zip zaps. Very happy to see this. And folks, stay tuned for a buyer's guide. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.